So, Shadow of Mordor is a game that was released in 2014. So it's getting up there in age. Still looks very well though. Ah, uh, the foliage could be more. But... It's still pretty detailed, where there is foliage. And the armor and stuff is still very detailed. Flexions don't look too bad off the armor, like you can see there. The sun's reflecting off of it. So the combat in this game uh, doesn't feel too dated. Uh, as I was saying, the combat in this game doesn't feel too dated. Uh, it does sometimes feel clunky, uh, but it kind of in the same way that like a one of the Arkham games kind of felt clunky, uh, it's, it sometimes is hard to aim your attacks. Not really that big of a deal. Uh, but the bosses are few and far between, with a bunch of mini bosses being captains and war chiefs. Uh, it's the combat does feel very fluid if you're in a large group of people. Uh, once you get leveled up and such, it's very easy to kill them. Like, this is a level 20 captain that I'm just running through right now. But, at the very start of the game, they pose a very good challenge. Uh... And you, then you can like dominate them, make them yours, give them commands to, like this guy is a bodyguard for this warchief, so we can have him betray the warchief, send him on his way. And it mix mixes a good blend of swordplay and archery to it, it doesn't feel like you have to rely on one. I normally, when I was doing my playthrough, I normally relied solely on archery for the most part. Uh, that way, it's a lot easier, especially with like just grunts, you can just pick them off one by one. And at a certain point, you can get slaves to help you out, which is another cool thing. Uh, so the one thing I will say, the moving around in the world if you don't have a Karagor or a beast to ride, it's very slow. Uh, especially like in the first area, which is this is, there's just not a lot to see. Uh, and so you're just running around for the most part because you can't tame Karagors until the second part, the second act. You're just sort of running around like this, and it gets very slow after a while. And after you complete some of the missions, you're basically just tracking down the four war chiefs and killing them. And that's your goal to end the first half to get to the first boss. No man can face a true Uruk. So this will be like killing your war chief. And that's basically to the extent, once you beat the game, that's to the extent that the game goes to. You! You're the one who promised I'd die slow, ain't ya? Better get ready to eat shrunk! Scream for me! 
But man, once you get to, like the power-ups, like the special abilities, you really can just chop through captains and war chiefs like that. Just. And this is kind of a bigger problem in the DLC than it is in the base game, because the base game doesn't slow down time like the DLC does. Where'd he go? But like this captain, I got him down really quickly. So as you progress through the story and you level up, you get abilities and ability points and there's power tiers. You get power from killing captains and war chiefs, and you get ability points from killing just the like, grunts and stuff and doing like uh, high uh, ex like executions and high kill streaks and basically once you get them all unlocked the game becomes a lot easier but there's a couple notable ones that's really useful the brand one uh and then the two the shadow mount and the hunters those ones are unlocked through story missions which you'll get eventually but they are very useful and I find myself using them a lot more. Probably more than I should. Lethal Shadow Strike is another one. That's a very good one. Then the two critical strikes. Uh, they're not like that important to get. But you can really uh, get those high hit streaks like really quickly with them. As well as like the Blade Master. Just getting your executions very quickly. Like that makes the game so much easier. Uh, and then Attributes. It, as you find stuff in the world, money, the, like currency, to buy these attributes. Uh, the health up, it's nice, but it's not necessary. And it also depends on your playstyle. Like, I, the first things I got were maxed out were the focus and elf shot. Uh, because I mostly use my bow. But if you went with a mostly melee focus playthrough max health would be useful i didn't find it that i needed it that much uh if you're good at countering the sword rune slots are good but they're probably like the first things you should fully get if you wanted to use a bunch of runes and like make your sword have different abilities and these the only one that's really necessary would be the storm sword ability because that is the one that allows you to quickly take down captains and war chiefs and then so for the missions there's 20 main missions which are believed divided in 10 and 10 or maybe 9 and 9 and then the boss missions uh and a lot of them are pretty good and introduce you to very good characters some of them are iconic like Gollum. some of the missions are a miss those ones got old pretty fast. These ones, I didn't actually realize they would be helpful. So I didn't really do that until like the very end of the second act. They are useful and they do offer the currency and XP. But it's like, rescue three outcasts that from a group of orcs. And you go to a stronghold and rescue three output. They're the three outcasts. There's sword legends, bow legends, and dagger legends. I'm all gonna mash into one. Because those ones are all, they have really annoying challenges for some of them, like for the bonus rewards. But they're all pretty fun. The bow one, I think, would be the hardest. But the dagger one, you just go in and, like, stealth kill a bunch of guys. And the stealth in this game is very good. Almost on par with, like, an Assassin's Creed stealth, I think. The sword legends uh, are really good because they're, it's like, go in combat and kill a certain amount of orcs in a certain time period. Survival challenge and hunting challenges, those are annoying. So you can get six in the first act, and then you finish the rest, the other four in the second act. But it's like, go around and kill some beasts, like a caragor or bat. I think rats and spiders were a couple, and you have to like kill 10 of them. The survival challenges were really annoying because you have to figure out where the plants that you're trying to find spawn. Like it tells you on the map, like if I go to up here in this corner, but you still have to find the location which they spawn at. Then the artifacts, these two are, they were annoying to get. They weren't hard, but they were annoying. If you've ever played the Arkham games, I would say it's better than what they did with the Riddler trophies, but still hiding like uh, 74 things defined throughout the world is annoying if you're trying to go through and like just play the missions and they don't show up if you're not in the Wraith world, which this is like the normal world, then the Wraith world would be this, where you can see the outlines of all the orcs, but I don't find myself 
staying in it often outside of like just so I can like grab up and go up there like that's the only time I'll really use it and then the Sauron's army section that was pretty good because you get a bunch of unknown captains that you can just find throughout the world or you can figure them out and get view their strengths and weaknesses and that makes them easier to kill but you can also be sure to not bring something that powers them up which is you know a good thing war chiefs are basically stronger captains with sometimes they have like a captain to guard them and there's like a special mission like this guy you have to walk into his trap and then he'll come out and face you or this one, you have to kill some of his supporters and then he'll come out and face you. They get old after a while, especially in the DLC, because you've already done it two times at that point. It's not accurate to the story that Tolkien wrote as much. Uh, it doesn't mean it's bad. I quite enjoy the story. The characters that were introduced were actually pretty good. One thing I will say though, I don't know if it was just my computer or like if I had it on stable overclock or something. But I haven't experienced it in any other game. It kept crashing on me, like completely crashing, computer froze up. And I tried reinstalling or viewing the interrogated game files, just didn't help. And actually it did this when I was trying to record this a bunch. So I'm like, okay, I'll try to like go through with all the settings and just find out what's doing it. I turned VSync off and uncapped the frame rate. And that seems to have fixed it, it hasn't crashed since I've done that. So that's something to keep in mind. The combat missions for the captains. Those... Have like special objectives and then you can take down the captain. Now, captains, once you get the hang of it, you can stun them, knock them down, do an execution, and then they're dead. Because once you figure out how to take them down, you can kill them like instantly. And they're no longer a threat. And then this brings me to the rune system. As you kill captains, you get runes that come in either epic or, le or levels, which uh, the leveled ones I actually find more useful than the epic ones, even though the epic ones are supposed to be better. Like for my sword, I have Orc Slayer, which uh, the combat finishers, like executions, will do more damage against captains. And then Storm of Battle, which increases all sword damage by 50%. Those are the two epic runes that I like for my sword. Most of these aren't very useful. That one, that one might be if you wanted to blitz down a captain or like a war chief for longer and you weren't that leveled up. Well, like this, I've, I had that equipped for probably the first half. I've never really found that useful, so I took it off when I got Savage Onslaught and then 4 Vengeance, which boosts your damage about 60% plus the another 50%, so I'm actually doing a lot more damage. The Bow one, that one, the Ascendant Rune, that's the one I found useful, and the Deadly Archer one. All the other ones aren't really that useful to me, I just didn't have anything else to put there, so I put them because it's better than having nothing. But they go up to level 30 if you have the Bright lord dlc and they go up to level 25 if you just have the base game and so the first act you're in this area i would say that they probably could have done better as their first area because uh this area is basically the same as this area the only thing like the strongholds are the only parts that are really unique uh in this first area because you have uruk's hollow which is i think my favorite stronghold in the first area. You have the east and west garrison. Then you have the uh, like keep area. And that's where you're like your first second like that's where the story really takes off. That's like the second mission where the story really takes off is in this area. But it's Not that great of a stronghold. This one is unique because it's multi-tiered in a way where you have like three tiers. So in the Lord of the Hunt campaign, these uh, Beastmaster War Chiefs come in and you get to talk to a character that reappeared, or that reappears, that was in the second act. Uh, 
And it's the same area, basically. I think it's the exact same map, actually, from the second act. You get different war chiefs. These ones I've all, like, dominated. And it also comes with a challenge mode. And a new skin. Uh, but, like, you get Karagoths, which are, like, stronger forms of Karagors that can, like, sneak around. And you get to learn how to, like, ride them and mount them. Uh, the War Chiefs were probably the best part. I really enjoyed the War Chiefs in this, uh, one. Even though they were basically the same as the last, you know, the last, like, three acts. So, the entire game. It just, they feel a lot better and a lot more in tune with the world. The challenge part would be you get these uh, trials of war, and ick, the challenge part with this DLC is test of the wild. You have to kill all the war chiefs and all the captains. You have to kill ten captains with monsters, which part of the new thing is that the new beasts are a lot easier to kill orcs and captains with, which I like. You have to earn 13,000 points, but you have to complete it in 40 minutes. And there's a lot of guides out there on how to do it. Uh, you can see there, 37, 52. It's very hard to do. The Bright Lore campaign, in which you kill a Brimbor, trying to challenge someone's claim to Mordor. That one is really cool. I think that's my favorite DLC, or just the favorite campaign, because you get a wield the One Ring, and you get to, like, build the towers and defend the towers. I, I like that more than just killing a bunch of war chiefs. Uh, the Sauron battle was okay. The final battle, it was... It felt like a glorified boss. It was a glorified boss, to be fair. But I didn't feel like the final boss to me. Because I basically used my special ability, which slows down time and gives me a bunch of executions I can do in a row. Killed him, and that was that. The campaign itself, I think, was better than the actual boss battle. Whereas in Lord of the Hunt, the boss battles, I think, were the highlight compared to the campaign. Then story mode, I'd say it does a good blend of both. The uh, Test of the Ring with the Bright Lord campaign DLC. You have to kill five war chiefs, 12 captains, and you have to brand, to get, like, the achievement, you have to brand uh, eight of the 20 war chief or captains, and then you have to kill 12 of those captains with five war chiefs. The branding of 50 grunts, that should be pretty easy for most people. And then you have to keep completing in an hour, which is a lot more forgiving than Test of the Wild. But my final point with the game is the achievements. So the global achievement sets. I got 100% in the game. Like, the brand all five war chiefs. Not. As you play through the game, you'll get most of these. The artifacts. That one was a hard one, uh, because that's m more like the, uh, like the gold ones you can see, they're like harder ones. Those ones took some grinding to get, most of those will just be like completing the missions. As far as achievements go, it's not the worst set of achievements I've seen. Lord of the Ring, that one, I managed to beat that first try, but I think because I already did hunt as my mistress, I was able to do it so much easier. All in all, I think Shadow of Mordor uh, definitely is one of the better uh, Lord of the Rings games. Even though it's not really Lord of the Rings. And the skins are really well done. Like, I like the Dark Ranger one. And now I'm going to go into some benchmarks. So I'm running a 3070 Ti and an 11600K, which is overclocked. 